Ralph, are you there? Yeah, here I come. Nice to have you here. I wanted to do a, just a little introduction and just talk about you and, and uh, introduce you. You're a, uh, you know, you are really one of the landmark directors in animation. And you had the most successful independent animated film ever made with Fritz the Cat making something like $90 million for a $700,000 budget, which is uh, pretty astonishing. And that your films made more money than Disney in the 70s, even though you had only pennies to work with. You had very, very small budgets. But one thing you always had in every film you did was a really good basic idea. And it was like if you're taking an underground comic and turning it into a movie, you're taking sword and sorcery, uh, like in Wizards, or you're taking something that animation's never been before, and you're, and you're showing the public something they've never seen before. And then Cool World was a very surreal film, uh, unlike anything that had preceded it, although it wasn't your actual original vision. But uh, what I was wondering is if maybe we could start the, the conversation off with a question from me. And that is, could you talk a little bit about what your original idea was for Cool World? Yeah, <laughs> but you know, it's, absolutely. Um, no, first of all, uh, by the time I, I had my own studio, um, ran my own place, did all my own fighting and cleaned my own bathroom, but that went on for 30 years. I got very tired. So I thought that if I could go to, go to a studio and get this idea done, that I could do a film much easier on my heart and my family than the last 30 or 40 years. So mm -hmm. I went to Paramount because I knew that Paramount, because I'm also a good salesman. And I went to Paramount because Franklin Kiesel Jr who was a producer there, uh, had a fight, was going to do a picture with Don Blues, and they had a fight. I don't know what it was about, but they broke up, and I told my lawyer that I think Frank would be angry enough to buy a picture for me just to get even with Blues. So that that's a salesmanship. So, well, that's Hollywood. That's, where do you go with a film? you got to have an opportunity. So I'm good that way. So my lawyer went... To Frank Lakisa Jr., he said, Of course, I'll do the film. Because <laughs> she's angry at Blues, you want to do back shit. Sure. <laughs> All right. Well, the original idea was a cartoon world and the real world crashing together, which is technology and fantasy, which is a very big thing of mine. And I wanted to do a story about a, a detective that goes into the cartoon world, goes to bed with a cartoon lady. And they have a baby which is half live and half animated, uh, and the baby and the, he freaks out the, the detective and he runs back to the real world, and the the baby who is both had a mind to have them both half animated and half live in combination, uh, which is very freaky, uh, chase his father back uh, to the real world, and then the when you um, go to bed with a cartoon girl, she becomes real. So then the cartoon world girl goes to Vegas. So it was a, it was a, a, basically it was an animated horror story with overtones to fathers and sons having problems. I gave them the idea and they accepted it. So did Paramount, they, they green-lighted the film. So I had forgotten that the studios who own the studios I'm working for, well, they do what they want. Which are my near naive tell you know what Terry Tunes that I started in, I did what I wanted. They didn't care. I mean, I did anything I wanted, and it was the kind of studio that's why I love Terry Tunes. But you can make a mistake. And but and when I had my own place after Terry Tunes, I didn't uh I did what I wanted. The kind of casting I wanted in the film was Brad Pitt. I've seen I'd just seen him. I thought he was great. He reminded me of a young James Dean. Brad Pitt for the cop, and uh, some very young women um, for Holly, you know, uh, 17, 18, 16, 19 year old women um, for Holly. To me, that was closer to uh, the way I saw the film. Uh, I guess like a Tex, a Tex Avery a cartoon, you know, uh, um, that kind of vibe I wanted, and it to be a R rated horror movie. 
Well, they were spending a lot of money on this film, $30 million or something, and the studio. My biggest budget ever was Lord of the Rings that you worked on so brilliantly for me at $8 million, and the rest of the films were under a million or a million. Mm-hmm. So that was so much money to me, I couldn't believe it. And the quality of animation in that picture shows uh, the few extra bucks I got that I was able to not worry about color lines and everything. I wouldn't have the budget. There's some pretty decent animation in that picture, quality-wise. Mm-hmm. And backgrounds were extraordinary. Um, so there are a lot of this. All right. So, but they wanted for their $30 million protection, which is how studios think. So they wanted to hire a star. So if I wanted Brad Pitt, which they didn't want, because he was nobody at that time, mm-hmm. um, they told me to take Kim Basinger. They had to, I had to take Basinger. Well, Basinger is extremely beautiful, extremely gorgeous, and a great actress, but a little old, old for me. That's how I saw the part for a hot young chick who's supposed to go into... Um, a Vegas bar with cowboys and dance on the table, right? So, but I could argue back and forth, back and forth. I didn't win that one, right? So, who did, Frank, you, who did, I, you, who did you want for Holly? Well, there were a couple of people I looked at at the time. One was, uh, mind you, this is 20, was it 30 years ago, 25 years ago? Uh, True yes. Barrymore was one. Uh, there was a, a girl that Brad Pitt was living with that uh, was one. Um, I, she was an actress. They did a film, a film together called uh, Juliet Lewis. Thank you. You yeah. got it. So, anyhow, all right. So, and then for the underground cartoonist, I wanted an American underground cartoonist, um, like an actor who could represent that. And there was a guy, a couple of guys that could do that, but they wanted for some reason. Uh, as more protection against Kim, uh, I forget his name. Gabriel Byrne? Gabriel Byrne. Yeah. He was a great actor and a wonderful face, but he's not an American underground cartoonist. And he, so, doesn't, he doesn't say underground cartoonist. At least when I watch him act or whatever, that, that doesn't seem like an underground cartoonist type of person. No, it's not even close. Yeah. So what I'm saying is not, not his fault. He's a very distinguished British, uh, Irish guy. He's a great actor. Great actor. Now, this shows you, or it showed me, I got very depressed. It showed me what it means to work for a studio. In other words, so it took the heart out of me because basically I'm the kind of emotional director that if I'm shooting live action and I don't believe the characters are the characters, it doesn't go anywhere with me. Do you have a certain actor in mind to play Jack the cartoonist? Oh, yeah. This was so long ago. You know, I'm 85, so I forget a lot. There was a guy that played in uh, Sex Lies and Videotape or something. There's a couple of great young actors. Uh, oh, you wanted a young actor? Yes, yeah, Sean Penn. Oh, Sean Penn would have been awesome. I'm saying these. Are, this is 30 years ago. This is an American underground cartoonist. Yeah. They are young. They're not. They're not in their forties. They're in the eighteens, in the nineteens, in their twenties. Yeah, that would have been a great choice. That's one of them. That's the kind of thing I wanted. Um, yeah, I, Harvey Keitel. There, there were a lot of different things, but they wanted Gabriel Byrne. What do you do with that? I don't. I can't even explain that. I think so. That was a problem I had. So I figured, okay, it's their studio. I learned at that point. That this was my mistake. I never. It's their place. It's their money. They do what they want. They've always done what they want. So I didn't have any particular fights. They rewrote the script. And why did they rewrite the script? Without me. Uh, because Kim Basinger wanted a PG instead of an R. Mm-hmm. You know, she's a good girl. And, and she wants everyone to love her. And uh, my following is pretty shady. So... <laughs> The point is, so they got their PG, uh, which I didn't want, and that's it. And that's the story. And I did the film as best I could. I had hired great people like yourself. I went to New York. Oh, by, by the way, Barry Barry had worked for me on other pictures, American Pop and stuff. So I knew how great he was. So I had to go to New York 
and talk him and Trish, his wife, who are also, also always hired as a background painter, but she's not far behind Barry, if, if she's behind at all. And <laughs> I talked to, Barry was working in advertising in New York. So I talked it into coming back to California with me to start this movie, because Barry was one of the great background artists of all times. And um, you, well, you look, 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 look at his work, it talks for itself. Um, so they came and I uh, paid Barry, well, at that time, uh, extraordinarily well, Paramount paid Barry, I didn't have to pay. Okay. So whatever Barry asked for, he got, I didn't care. That's, it wasn't an issue to me anymore of money and, and that did work, that part of the equation worked. Okay, so we did the film, uh, we finished it. Uh, it is what it is, it's still playing, everyone loves it. Uh, Barry told me a lot of people think it's great, I think it's good. The fact that it wasn't what I wanted, it doesn't matter. It's something else now. But yeah. what I learned, but that also I quit the business after that. I said, look, uh, I can't work with studios. I can't, I can't operate that way. They do what they want. And I don't know why they make such bad decisions. In other words, the point is, how could studios, which I'm still shocked at and kind of don't understand, how could studios, I got nothing against Gable Burns. I got nothing against him, basically. But how could anybody in the studio think that the people that I sent to them with the American underground cartoonists was not... I mean, if Gabriel Byrne is nowhere an underground cartoonist, to my mind or anyone else, now I find out your mind, uh, how do they make that decision? I mean, what is that decision based on? I don't get it. Is it based on politics or that they just don't understand what I'm doing? I think probably a little of both. Kim's great, yeah. but she's not a hot 19-year-old chick running around that I wanted, which is what they bought when I explained it to them. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand that. So I said, look, studios are not for me. I'm spoiled. I had my own way forever. You know, I, didn't, I forgot what it was like. So I figured that's it for me. I'm not going back to Heart, Heartache Alley, which is a small, low-budget, under independent studio. And that was it for me in the business. I'm not complaining. I'm not arguing. I wish... And people are still loving Cool World. They love it. Um, what it would have been or could have been or should have been, that's something else. They want to do that picture. They could always call me. So that's that. Um, and that's that. That's the story of Cool World. And here, okay, I'm gone, guys. All Thanks. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Thank Ralph. you. Ralph. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.